welcome. Thank you all so much for joining us. I am your host, Trinette. I'll call your green and this is woman on fire and uh, where we just sit back and we relax and we have girl talk we're talking chit chatting about help building healthy communities and relationships and with self with friends with family and most importantly with God and today on the show I have a very special friend and, and guest uh, let's welcome Marcia Brown welcome Marcia how are you I am doing well thank you so much for having me on the show thank this is exciting comment thank you so much for trailblazer yeah. thank you thank you <laughs> this very is much. an awesome woman of god a woman on fire and uh, she's going to be with us to share some things that's going on in her life and her testimony and when i say i'm so proud of her i'm so proud of her uh, met her years ago through an organization and she's just her spirit is just dynamic so uh let's get right into it let's get right nice. back into it and uh tell us who is marcia brown who is this dynamic woman marcia brown is a flawed woman mm. who through the glory of god and through the development of god and just the journey that he's taken me i have come to into motherhood. I'm the mother of Emmanuel James Shepherd, yes. and he's truly my heartbeat. I am a minister. I'm an authoress, yes. a community servant. Wow. I'm the founder and executive director of Women Blooming in Season, okay. which is a community organization where we seek to empower, educate, mm -hmm. and just have our, our, our individuals just build community and mm -hmm. work and learn how to use the tools that God has already given them. Mm. And so we do that through community service, through okay. prof professional development, okay. and through personal development. Okay. Because everything that we do is an extension of us. Mm. So we need to be live as optimally as we can wow. and just forgive ourselves and just continue to grow. Wow. So it's when we live on purpose, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in purpose, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and when we're intentional, you know, God can use us Wow. as flawed beings because no one is perfect, right. but he can, he can use us as long as we're willing. Wow. So you introduced yourself and you said flawed. Tell us some more about that. Why did you do that? Why did you use the word, the term flawed? Because most, most of us want, uh, we want to admit that we've had, we have flaws. So why did you do that? Why did you introduce yourself with that? I introduced myself as flawed mm -hmm. because it's, I have to be authentic mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because I am not full, I'm not worthy mm -hmm. of the goodness of God mm -hmm. and, and things that he has brought me out right. of. You know, right. I have to right. um, admit, and when we actually give our testimony, mm -hmm. um, it just, we can free other people. Mm -hmm. And so when we admit, I'm not perfect. I have things that I've done, things that were done to me, mm -hmm. but I've done things. You know, we, we, when we have that exchange, and right. I think that's the most powerful thing, right. when we can acknowledge mm -hmm. that we're not perfect, that we can acknowledge that right. even on this Christ walk. Mm -hmm. Because you're a Christian woman. Yes, so I am. So how could you be flawed if you're on walking with Christ? Exactly. So I don't think people understand that, that we have our flaws. Mm -hmm. Like you said, when we're giving our life over to Christ and he helps us and we're just like, oh, wow, okay, I did these things. I know how to correct them. Exactly. And moving forward with it. And having a spirit of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. You know, when we get paralyzed, mm -hmm. oftentimes, when, you know, we can look back at, at the things that we've done, mm -hmm. that were done to us, mm -hmm. and it, we can oftentimes we're like, well, I'm not worthy. Mm -hmm. Like you can't use me. And that was my testimony. There were a number of things that I've always pushed other people ahead of me really? and, and just wanted from that level of support. Really? But in, in the season, God was still develop, developing me mm -hmm. even then, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like a lot of times we want to, as I stated before, we want to exclude things, mm -hmm, but God mm -hmm. is a God of inclusion. Mm -hmm. And so he literally ordained every every situation that I placed myself in and mm -hmm. things that happened to me. Wow. He literally used all that to develop me really? and to grow. You have to have development and growth in order mm -hmm. to be as optimal as you can. And wow. when you admit that you're flawed, mm -hmm. you admit those things, mm -hmm. you position yourself to, in humility. Okay. So you position okay. yourself to be guided. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that, and that's what's most important 
relinquishing your control. How did you do that as it, a woman that you knew at that time, you knew what you wanted, you, mm -hmm. you knew the direction that you wanted to go, but how did you, um, how did you do that? How did you relinquish that? that? It was not a willing process, okay. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> to say the least, because You're I right. certainly had, you know, my concept of how I wanted mm -hmm. things to go. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was going to church. I was okay. active in church. I okay. was, um, you know, helping the church, like working administratively okay. and doing those things. I've okay. always had a heart for people. Mm. And yeah, but I was like, you know, Lord, all right. Mm -hmm. I got you. I know. I know you. I, I trust you. Right. We think that we trust him. It always starts in church, y'all. We mm -hmm. all. It, it starts in church, like we just know because we're in church mm -hmm. that we are on that right path. Right. Wow. And so, so, literally, you know, along the way, you know, you you see things. You know, you mm -hmm. observe different things in church. You with different people. Right. Um. But just really relinquishing and being like, okay, when I, um, and I mentioned it in She Dreams in Real Life, uh -huh. um, my story that okay. was um, within that book, right. it's called But God, okay. Okay. Not Perfect, Just Prayerful. Right. Because, um, you know, when you're humble, mm -hmm. again, you can be guided, mm -hmm. but there are times you have to hit rock bottom. Yes. And that varies from person to person, but wow. there are times where even the storm is still positioning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But there are times where when I, I hit that bottom, I had that crossroad experience. Mm -hmm. um, being a mother, you know, being in a relationship, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, sort of hitting certain plateaus mm -hmm. where I wanted more, um, wanted to do more, but it, I was just frustrated because you can't okay. control yeah. other people. Right. You know, you can only <laughs> control yourself, exactly. you know, and just wanting better. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and just really getting fed up. I literally, and I've written about it in the book, mm -hmm. I threw my hands up. I was like, Lord, forgive me. Mm -hmm. Forgive me for putting my will really ahead of your will. So you, what, you didn't forgive anybody else. You said, forgive me. I said, forgive me because wow, everybody, people have to have permission to mistreat you. Wow. And okay. so okay. it's that there's an exchange. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had to forgive myself before I could fully forgive others. Because okay. I was like, how did you put yourself in that situation? Oh, wow. So you did the opposite of what we've been taught. Forgive others and then forgive yourself. Because I, that's something I, I've learned in this season uh, was to forgive myself. Because mm -hmm. I started forgiving everyone else throughout the journey, but I had never forgiven myself. And while, I was on this, while I'm on the journey, I'm still learning how mm -hmm. to forgive myself. I'm seeing a, like, there's a difference in it. You know, so yeah. you did the opposite. You did it first. You forgave yourself first. Yes, and okay. it was, it literally, it had to be like, I, I remember it being like case by case. Okay. Um, because here's the deal, like, n no one can do anything to you that you don't allow. We've heard mm -hmm. that. We know mm -hmm. that. We mm -hmm. recite that. Right. But a lot of times we don't really ingest it. Mm -hmm. And so, as I stated previously, because everything is an extension of us, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it started with me. Okay, okay. And I can't force anybody else to act a certain way, but I can only control Marcia. So in controlling mm -hmm. Marcia, it doesn't matter what you do. Wow. Okay. I have to forgive me, and mm -hmm. in forgiving myself, mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, if you accept my forgiveness or you don't, or, or, or my petition of forgiveness or that dialogue, mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. still have to be okay to press forward because that opens the door for validation. Wow. So there are times okay. where, you know, your your apology, whether mm -hmm. you're seeking to give one mm -hmm. and maybe they're not, it's not the season for them to receive it. Okay. Or or them having to apologize to you and you right. might not receive yeah, that. Yeah. There are times you have to be okay with that. Yeah, yeah. It still comes back to you. Mm -hmm. It still comes back to you and it's about being in communion with God. This isn't something that Marcia came up with. Okay, this is yeah. something that was revelatory for me. Right. In those in those moments of, of seeking God. Okay. In those okay. moments of despair. Okay. In those moments of frustration. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That is when he, my relationship was cultivated, was deepened. Okay. In those in those situations where I couldn't get myself out of it. Wow. You know, like, yeah, yeah. Cause you try to. I'm strategic. I'm like, okay, hold on. Yeah. Right. All right. So, <laughs> you know, well, what about this? And you know, right. let's look over here. Plan but I really had out. to. Right. I I had to. 
I was in a situation where, you know what? Mm -hmm. You can't do anything but follow his lead. Mm. And I fought. And that's difficult. And sometimes I still fight. I'm yeah. like, what? Yeah. Are, you, <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> exactly. Like, you have it all planned out. You're trying to figure out other ways. He yeah. has his one way. His, his way. And you're just like, all right. Like you said, you just throw up the hands and just, all right. Because gonna, he's going to do it anyway. Anyway. <laughs> And we have to realize in that walking, see, mm -hmm. a lot of times, um, I think we've been done a disservice because mm -hmm. we talk about when you come into Christ mm -hmm. and, oh, you yes. know, everything's going to be, oh. you know, just better. And, yeah. You know, no, that's when it starts. That's, yes. That's game time. <laughs> that's when it starts, you know. Yes. You have to be, that's when it's, it's like, okay, spiritual warfare. Yeah. You know, you're dealing with all these different yeah. things and you just have to learn how to just use the tools that, mm -hmm. that he mm -hmm. has given you, use the word. Yeah. You know, the burden of proof is on him. It's not on us. Wow. wow. It doesn't say Trinette's Bible. Exactly. It doesn't say Marcia's Bible. Right. The Holy Bible is his word. Mm -hmm. So we have to activate it. We have to learn the tools. And along the journey of people sewing into me, mm -hmm. you know, like our village, our tribe is so paramount yeah. of who you have. You will literally regurgitate regurgitate mm -hmm. what's on the inside of you so you right. have to be careful of mm -hmm. who you have encamped around you right. and that that's what you'll produce wow. wow that's what you'll produce and so that journey um and it's it's an um evolving journey mm -hmm. i'm mm -hmm. nowhere near it, the right. end right you know like right. but you're I, in a better place than before definitely better place definitely Wow. Marcia Brown is here today with us and sharing her journey. Um, she's also an author, authoress. Yes. I like that. Authoress. Um, tell us more about your book. Oh, certainly. Tell well, the book is entitled She Dreams in Real Life. Okay. So it was compiled by the phenomenal Ariel Ramsey okay, okay. of She Launches Dreams okay. Network and Imperial 1002 Designs. Okay. Um, she literally just wanted to have the avenue for women to mm. come together and just to share their growth, share okay. their walk, okay. their journeys. Wow. Um, oftentimes, you know, you have to have a platform yeah. already established, and yeah. you know, everyone wants to jump on the next new name. Yeah. Yeah. And so she afforded us the opportunity okay. to just really just show how God moved in our lives mm. and how we came on came through to the other wow. side. And so um, I'm very appreciative um, to her for this opportunity. And um, I mentioned before um, to you that we mm -hmm. had, um, I had this on my vision board. Yes, yes. You know, last year in 2017. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll elaborate a little bit more right. um, on that later. But um, so this was scary. This was kind of overwhelming. I like Saturday yeah, night. Like, because you're opening yourself up to the world. Yeah, you know. Like everybody's going to read this. Yeah. <laughs> like if I write this down, they're going to read it. Exactly. Like people. People, you know. <laughs> yeah. I'm like strangers, family, everybody, right, you know. And so right. it, it was very vulnerable, but yeah. we know that God moves in uncomfortability. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, Lord, you're stretching me. Yeah. But, um, I trust you. Right. <laughs> and so um, I entitled my story, But God, Not Perfect, Just mm -hmm. Prayerful. Wow, and wow. Um, like literally it was just so amazing. Um, I, I placed in the book the best mm -hmm. advice that I would give would be don't allow the notion of failure mm -hmm. to stop you. Keep going because your process is designed to equip you for your purpose. Mm. And um, three words that I would give to my 12-year-old self mm -hmm. was, trust your journey. Wow. So we have tools. Yeah, yeah. God has already equipped us. Yeah. But oftentimes when we are operating worldly or cardinally, mm -hmm. we misuse the tools that we have. Okay. So and, okay. and, and, and that's why I put, you know, just with equipping, mm -hmm. so you know, when you're mm -hmm. equipped, you know which tool to apply right you know right, you know which right. one to use yeah and so I that's what I, I really have gained in this walk and being serious okay. and being intentional wow what would be a tool that you would um, you said you mentioned to your 12 year old so um, 
what tool would you use for, and, and, and really for girls who are coming up and coming into their womanhood or whatnot? Mm -hmm. Because I, I just feel like we as uh, women, it's our responsibility to show the generation, you know, at least mm -hmm. give them that, um, that platform, that, that kind of a guidance, because there's so many lost young girls out here. Yeah. And it's scary every year, it seems like, Okay, are they falling by the wayside, or mm -hmm. we're we not doing what we're supposed to do, right. or what? What is it that we're we're not doing? So, what is a tool that you that you use, or would use for the twelve year old girl? A tool I would use for the twelve year old girl would be communication. Mm -hmm. Yes, that communication. You know, um, that's a, a pivotal age where yeah. you know you're coming into your preteen years. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, you have your little friends, your little girlfriends, yeah. and especially now. Um, yeah. I, I spoke at my alma mater, my okay. high school alma mater, Oak okay. High School in Columbia, South Carolina, okay. and I had um, a, a great opportunity to speak with the students okay. and um, hear their stories, right. hear um, their triumphs and their trials, and right. hear their mindset state. And right. really, you know, we have some amazing teachers yeah. there and and students and um, faculty and staff. But what mm -hmm. I what I kept hearing mm -hmm. was just the communication mm -hmm. and tapping into that okay. community is important. A yeah. tribe is important. Yeah. Um, of being able to have at least one or two people where you can go to. Right. You know, right. journaling right. is important. And, you know, it, it's almost a little lost art. Yes. It um, is. In the in the wave of technology. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. literally journaling and writing these things mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. and um, I did an exercise about self-talk. Okay, okay. And so we did a mirroring, mirroring exercise. Okay. So it's literally about what you think, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, what, mm -hmm. what's implanted, mm -hmm. and that's why we have to protect our ear gates, our eye gates, and our mouth gates. Say that again. <laughs> but as soon as a thought is sown, yeah. a seed is planted, mm -hmm. or you hear, right. you know, you have to watch what you hear. Yes. You know, um, because that shapes your perception mm -hmm. and shapes your reality. Mm -hmm. So literally dealing with the self-talk and the self-talk then affects the self-image wow. and then the behavior. And wow. so realizing that cycle and when things are introduced, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how it can have a positive or a negative effect. Mm -hmm. You know, that's something that we just have to be aware. Right. And, and self-love, like literally, because when you love yourself, you mm -hmm. won't allow certain things to transpire. And that you is won't answer so to certain important. things. That's so important, and we're not. And I, I, I can remember being twelve, and even though I've, I've come from a uh, positive background, right. positive household, but when you leave that household, household. Mm -hmm. it's like all of Who this are you stuff. Listening yeah, to? and you want to be with your friends and, and right. everybody, but it seems like all of that is coming into in, into your little minds or whatnot, mm -hmm. and then it seems to shape some it of does. us into who you know we become. And either it's positive or negative, and, mm -hmm. and I'm seeing a lot of more negative nowadays. So, wow. That's and we just a, have to combat that. Mm -hmm. How do we combat that? Right. There are a myriad of programs mm -hmm, there. Mm -hmm. it's, it's about being aware. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you have a lot of people that are just, they're working, they're, mm -hmm. they're they don't have the opportunity yes. to so yeah, yeah. fully give yeah. of themselves because mm -hmm. they're so far stretched yeah so it's literally even with the parents or the the guardians mm -hmm. to reach out to that tribe you know right. reach out yeah. and allow them to fill the gap mm -hmm. you know uh, having a Christian walk having prayer yeah yeah um yeah. and just as parents mm -hmm. um it's, it's interesting even with my son allowing them to share their truth a lot of times parents and guardians don't want to receive because they take it personally mm -hmm. as it's an attack on them. But yes. it's literally allowing them to express. Yes. If you allow, no matter how painful it yeah. is, yeah. but if you, when we tell a child, you know, yeah. all right, hush, be quiet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You literally are stifling their voice. I, you know what? I talk about that all the time and I always make the disclaimer, I'm not a parent, you know, because mm -hmm. a lot of times you, you don't, you will, want to be careful how you overstep anything. Um, and I tell people, I said, no, I'm not a parent, but as an educator, I see this quite often, especially mm -hmm. in our community. We're quick to hush the child up and not right. realizing that there are people too. 
it's like, let's get our own feelings mm -hmm. and listen. I'm all about expression. And I, I just believe that it is how you express yourself. You know, you can still express yourself with respect. And exactly. I think that's what we need to teach, exactly. you know, within our community. And I like that, that you stated that it's like allowing the kids to, to be themselves and and to express that because they're they're little people. I call them little people. Exactly. <laughs> they have so much on their little minds, and when they tell you how they feel, we get mad with them. Right. And it's like, well, think about how we were as children. We didn't want to be told. Told. Be quiet. Exactly. And now Stand look at us now. Place. That's the reason why we're going through half the stuff. <laughs> if we just somebody just listened to us, mm -hmm. wow. Okay. But it's it, that taps into generational curses. Yes. You oh, know. Wow. That yeah. taps into literally <clears throat> passing on, you know, not questioning the status quo, not questioning yeah. what was done. Wow. And then we, in return, hand it over to the next generation. And so mm -hmm. that's, that's why communication is important. Mm -hmm. That's why just assessing the health of your family, assessing the health of of the school or of the yeah, students yeah. of the class yeah. take an assessment so this is part of all your community all yes. that you do is part of your community yes talk to us more about um the woman blooming season yes okay. women blooming, blooming season. season um i'll i'll speak to that mm -hmm. because this will tie into okay. the book okay um so you asked me to um just read a few yes. um passages and so um, again, it's entitled, But God, mm -hmm. Not Perfect, Just Prayerful. Um, my story is about a period of my life when I was at a spiritual crossroad. During this time, I experienced great accomplishments, failures, and I dealt with bouts of uncertainty. I was at a place where I knew God wanted more from me and wanted me to fully activate my purpose. It was time to fully step into his will for my life. So the first portion of the story is entitled flaw mm. and hence why um i i stated that i am flawed yes but forgiven mm. I like becoming a mother is one of the most amazing careers i feel i've ever possessed on god's green earth during my pregnancy i was so ecstatic over this little boy i was carrying in my womb and i would vow to him daily that no matter what i would always push to be the very best version of myself that i could be I was working in an exhilarating yet demanding work environment, but I felt God's grace on me in my pregnancy. I had the pleasure of working with some great people and some challenging people, but I learned many lessons from everyone. I learned that every situation isn't going to be ideal or feel good, and that being stretched was equipping me in sharpening my skill set. My wall of inspiration at my desk was filled with scriptures and inspirational affirmations to stay empowered and positive, but sometimes even that didn't seem to work. I was on pins and needles, but I trusted that God was doing, I trusted what God was doing for my life, for he never makes a, a shift without provision. The strain and stress started to take a toll, so I sought professional counsel, and when the opportunity presented itself, I decided to resign and was granted a severance package. Wow. Okay. And um, it's, it's five pages within the book, and then even after that, you're allowed to have your Selah moment, okay. where you can, after each author in the book, because uh -huh. this is an anthology, okay. after each, uh, um, each story in the book, you mm -hmm. can just write your moments of revelation, your, wow. you can journal. Okay. which is essential yeah you know yes you can yeah. see it you can speak it but writing it, writing it. and and literally mm -hmm. um by writing like following those steps mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. when it becomes etched in your person yeah. and when it becomes a bit more personable yeah. and you know habaka uh -huh. to to write the vision make and it make plain. it plain yes so they yes. that read it may run with it yes. and that's why it's so Paramount and why this ties in with Women Blooming in Season, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, which I'm the founder and executive director um, okay. for, is um, our initial mm -hmm. event was Write the Vision, Make It Plain. Really? Okay. Yes. Okay. A Women's Empowerment Conference. So, wow. well, the initial one was actually a mixer. Okay. And the mixer was a vision book mixer. Really? And so, because, you know, and I thought it was so interesting, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm in my 30s. Yeah, right. right. You know, um, but the dynamic and the, the demographic of the women that have followed and that have seen 
um, and have connected with us is okay. so powerful right. because there are our elders. Yeah. Some are younger, but majority of them are elders. Okay. And um, and just amazing dynamic women. Okay. But I said, Lord, what are you doing? What right? You know, like right. How how do, are they seeing you know women blooming in season? You know, yeah. it's just. <sighs> You know, I'm following your unctioning, but right. but what is this? And I always put forth um, uh, surveys. Okay. okay. And so just getting the feedback mm -hmm. of authenticity, getting the feedback of true connection. Okay. A lot of times we go so many different places yes. and we are dealing with facades. Yes. We're dealing with yes. representations mm -hmm. and we're wondering why, you know, you might, you know, go to a place of worship and you're leaving out the same. You so know, that, yes. and and so, and it's even with us being vulnerable enough mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. actually have that true connection with the Holy Spirit, right. um, whether it's solely by ourselves or in fellowship, right. It's, right? it's just very important. And so, literally, from that event, it was sold mm -hmm, out, mm -hmm. and I was like, My God, right. Right. you know, during that time, <laughs> um, I was homeless during really? that time, yes. And, okay. you know, I, I always, because I have a strong family background, mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. always could have gone home. Yeah, but, again, yeah. that's that me yeah. stepping, you know, operating in my will mm -hmm. and not the will of the mm -hmm, Lord. Mm -hmm. But grace still carried us through. Right. And so it's one of the things where, yeah, I could have gone home because, you know, my parents yeah. like, uh-uh. Yeah, mm -mm. right. Not my baby. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Honey, <laughs> I love them, and they have yeah. always been so supportive of me. Yeah, yeah, my yeah, grandparents, yeah. I mean, my brothers, aunts and uncles. So is that always... part of your tribe? Because that's what I was going to ask yes. you. Is that part of oh your tribe? Oh, my gosh. Okay. I am not who I am yeah. without yeah, them. Right. Without right. them, my elders, my grandfather, yeah. the late Moses Emmanuel yeah. Brown right. Sr., right. you know, Maisel Dubart uh -huh. Brown, mm -hmm. Alma Kennedy. I have to shout my grandparents yes. out. And yes. James Kennedy. And... Um, and Mr. and Mrs. Jeffrey Lamont Brown, wow. senior, my parents, I'm, I'm truly blessed that they have always poured into me, always told me that I can be great, no wow. matter what transpired, always like, come on, you can do it, Good. get back up. And so I was blessed and why I'm able to give so much love mm -hmm. and, and so much compassion mm -hmm. is definitely based upon the ideals that my parents and okay. my grandparents and my family, what That's they've instilled blessed. in us. Right. If one has, we all have, you know? Wow. So that's something that I'm able to give it. You mm -hmm. can't give anything that you don't have. Exactly, exactly. And that I have so much because it was cultivated. Okay. It was cultivated very early. Wow. Marcia Brown, oh my gosh, what a great, great journey. Tell us how we can get in touch with you. Certainly. So I have my website, marciapbrown.com okay. okay. and womenbloominginseason.org. Okay. And so we have signature events with Women Blooming in Season okay. where we have our, well, next year we're gearing up for the fifth annual Write the Vision, Make It Plain okay. Okay. Women's okay. Empowerment Conference. Mm -hmm. And so it will be here in Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. And we always have some phenomenal speakers. It's very interactive. Okay. I like to interact. I don't right. like to sit and have, you know, lecture to you. Right. That has its place. Mm -hmm. But when we are dealing with spiritual warfare and we're mm -hmm. dealing with needing to make a true connection. Right. It being, co being connected and, and being interactive is paramount. Right. Um, so between that and our annual toiletries okay. campaign, um, we do that as a day of service for MLK. Okay. Um, in January, and we partner with neighboring um, community service projects, and um, and we have our own campaign as well, okay. where we sponsor, we receive sponsorships, and we receive just donations, and we give back to transition to tr transitional wow. housing, okay. um, as well as to um, like different penitentiaries with women. That's as awesome. Well. Marcia Brown, you guys, I, thank, you. I, thank you so much for being here today. It thank was you. a pleasure and thank learned you. so much. And please connect with her. And as for myself, you can always connect with me via social media, Trinette L. Collier, on all social media, and visit my website at IamTrinetteLCollier.com. And as always, thank, thank you, so you so much. much. Uh, for being here and we thank you for tuning in and as always remember you have one life to live live it daily live laugh and love and give it your best and just thank you 
All right. Thank you. And until next time, we will see you. And bye. Bye. Thank you.